Wilder and I, the baby, we call him the baby, but man, he's grown up. We're gonna put silage tarp on the rest of our garden. As you can see, I've got bags made up. I almost have enough. I may need to bag some more rocks because we ran out of sand, so we're bagging small rocks and filling these bags, and we're gonna cover this whole upper portion of the garden with silage tarp for about three weeks, germinate all the weed seeds, then kill them with the tarp. It's just um, a beautiful thing. You ready? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. We're gonna start with this one here. We're gonna put it on this side so we don't walk on it. Did you hit your face? Yeah. It's hard when you fall down, isn't it? When you, especially when you're tired. We're gonna get to your nap really soon. It's a little bit windy out here, and I'm working basically alone. I've got this guy to help, but we'll see how this goes. These tarps are hard to handle in the wind, and it's kind of gusting and then calming down. Towards you. There you go. I put it on it right there. Good job. I'm taking advantage of a kid who probably shouldn't be out here barefoot, but he is. And having him walk up on this tarp real gingerly to not poke holes in it with his little lightweight body and put these bags on so I don't have to walk on it in my shoes or with my heavier weight so we won't poke holes in it. So far, no holes. It's working well. Yeah, we are almost done. Oh, what are you, what are you looking at? Um, so see this? Yep, it's a lake. And now there's a river coming out of it. That's cool. Okay, Brighton's just nailed putting these bags in the middle. And I've got a few gaps. I need seven more bags of rocks and we'll have this completely weighted down. And conveniently, we have this big rock pile here. That's rocks we threw out of the garden into a big pile. So I'm gonna work out of here. So now we're basically done with this. As you can see, looking towards the house in the lower portion of the garden, there's half of this covered, and then the whole upper portion of the garden is covered all the way across. This other corner, Bree has convinced me to not cover it. She really, really wants to plant. She really wants to plant. She doesn't want to plant her greens, carrots, potatoes, broccoli. She doesn't want to plant all that late. It will be an interesting experiment to see the difference through the season of what it does to actually tarp your beds pre-season versus not. I'm gonna start training her to lead. She just never learned because she's been in a herd, except for when we first got her, you know? Don't worry, we're taking you to green grass. You might need to get a stick and hurt her because she's just gonna wanna eat this grass. We want to get her out of this pasture because we're letting this pasture grow up some. And there's plenty of green grass outside of our pastures and in our yard and stuff. So we're taking her actually to even better grass than this. She ran off from Bree. Bree had to drop her lead rope. It's moments like this that I really miss our first cow, Dolly. She was so chill and gentle. We could lead her anywhere. She loved us. She loved to be petted by us. And Alice doesn't love us. She doesn't love to be petted by us. She doesn't come for neck rubs. She doesn't follow on a lead. It's really more that she just has the herd mentality. See? Told you. I don't want to leave her out there too long. I don't want her to get sick. She's, she's full on hay. Her rumen's all full. She'll be fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. This time of year, cows can um, overdo it on the spring grass and get sick. It can cause a magnesium deficiency. And uh, you have to treat that pretty quickly. It can be life-threatening. Now that we're back 
here, I'm gonna start working with her every day to gentle her and get her used to us. And we just haven't spent that much time with her, like working with her. So that's why she acts like that. I mean, I'm hoping that's why. I'm hoping it's not just like her personality. Um, but our other cow would follow me around and yeah, come when she was called. <laughs> So what's happening now is I'm getting ready to move the geese to this apple orchard area. The cows are worrying over here because Alice is out in the yard grazing. Bree is over here in the garden broad forking and she found something she wants to show us. Hey Wilder, what do you see? Cow. Cow, you're right. What'd you find? Where is it, Joy? It's right here. Well, what I'm mostly finding is, is this burdock or yellow dock? See that massive root system? Right, growing right in the middle of my bed. So I'm mostly getting that out of my garden beds. But I also found a really nice potato. It's a really, really nice one. So I'm gonna keep it <laughs> and we're gonna eat it. Next time we have potatoes. I bet there's one right here too. Yep, right there. There's a potato plant. We find them every year. Mostly we just need to do a thorough job of getting this burdock out of here takes look at this this is all burdock it just takes over i'm actually gonna get cardboard for the rose and i don't know if that'll kill it because it's such a big root system but anyway i'm gonna put cardboard on all my rows but i gotta get it out of the beds You trying to feed the cow? Yeah. She doesn't want that old hay. She's got fresh grass. She won't want that old hay. Look, she's got nice fresh grass. You can try to feed it to her, but she's not gonna want it. That, that'll be yucky. Yeah. Are you gonna eat grass like a cow? Can you tell me how it tastes? Yeah. How does it taste? How is that grass? My milk cow is as friendly as my bull. Hi. Now I'm working on protecting our apple trees from the geese because geese can do pretty significant damage to small trees. We're setting up a permanent, well, semi permanent area for the geese because they're laying eggs. This is the time of year. If they're gonna hatch eggs, they're gonna do it now. I want to get them set up in a spot where they have several month long protection and where they can build nests undisturbed. And so that's going to be in this orchard area here, but you have to protect your trees. I'll show you this one here. I had them in here and I had this tree protected uh, last week. I had them in here. They got to this tree despite me having it protected because I didn't have the wire high enough on it. So we should have this, what I'm doing now should work and keep them completely off the trees. I need to put this little fence away. This is actually a pig fence. It didn't work for the geese, they flew over it. Today we're gonna to clip our geese wings for the first time and put them in a higher electric fence. This is just a really simple way to store your fences that we think works really well. And it's easy because we just use old hay strings and rafters in the bar. They're just these things, if these get tangled, you could waste a day untangling one. That's like an exaggeration. But. Now that we got this fence hung up, I'm actually going to take it down and use it up there. <laughs> I, I didn't fill, hang it up just for the camera. I just realized, didn't realize this was the fence that was a little shorter. But then I hung it up and looked at it and said, actually, I want this one. Crazy boys. You want to go put her back? Yeah. She wants to go back. Let's go put her back. I want to go back. But of course, the video feels a little bit disjointed. It's kind of because our day is. <laughs> We're just like chasing the baby this way. I just kick the kids out of the camper to play in the sun while they can. Because they gravitate back into it. That bull is so mad that he's not out here with Alice. If you're 
you're wondering why we don't let the bull and the steer out, it's because we can't really control them as well as we control her. Even though she did get away from me earlier, she's very easy to herd. So I just don't feel comfortable letting them out. They could just go, especially the steer, like he'll just take off down the road. We've had it happen before. <laughs> Before I go back up to the garden to finish working, I wanted to show you what I just walked in the camper to. Look what you are doing. Did you make that all by yourself? Yeah. It's really pretty. Is this a white cake? Yes. What kind of frosting? Your kind of frosting? What's well, cream cheese, butter, and what else? Maple syrup. Yeah. Okay, their fence is set up up here in the orchard area. It looks pretty good. It's a nice big area. It's got sh afternoon shade down here. There's shade under the chick shot up there 24 7, I mean, all the time. And we're gonna move them, we're gonna clip their wings, and we're gonna um, put them up here and give them water. And Miss Grace is gonna help me. Thank you, Grace, for helping. You're a big help. Do you wanna catch the first one or do you want me to? I will. <laughs> We're clipping their wings because even though they can't really fly, like they don't can't fly anywhere, they can fly over a fence. They can like go and glide just a little ways. So they have escaped from fences by flying over them. Grace is going to get them water. I'm going to get them some hay for nesting material. <laughs> Whoa! Forgot about that hole. Oh my goodness. That's so funny. There's a lovely bunch of chamomile growing right in the grass right here. I had planted it around my blueberries last year. And it actually survived the winter, which is huge because that was my third time planting it. It's never survived the winter, but it did this last year. Now look at it go. I'm really excited about getting these geese moved for many reasons, but one of the top is that I can let my chickens out of the chicken coop. We've been training our chickens to go into the coop and know where their home is so that we can let them free range during the day and then they'll go in at night. Now I can let them out tomorrow because their coop attaches to where the geese were and they were fighting with the geese. so. I wasn't letting them out. It's so nice to have the geese where they're happier. We were having to keep them put up most of the time because they were just pooping everywhere and my kids run around barefoot. So it feels good to let them have some fresh grass and more of what they like. What you got? Just some munching asparagus. That's nice. I think we'll just eat it raw, it's not that much. So I just eat it with supper. Raw. How much more do you have to do before your beds are ready in the garden? I need to broad fork one more and then what I'm doing is just letting the weed seeds all come up and sprout and then I'm going to um, what do you call it flame weed it and then I'm gonna plant but I think tomorrow I'm actually going to broad fork and plant peas because there is an area that I'm just gonna go ahead and plant the peas in great so that's my plan for tomorrow and mow the grass tomorrow well friends I hope you enjoyed the video it is a beautiful spring day the kids are playing in the yard we got some work done today. Really enjoyed it. It's been another great day on the homestead. Join us next time. See ya.